So now you know how it works. Let's see it in practice. I've dropped the throttles and popped the air brake to show you this in action. As I slow down, I'm going to continue to pitch up to maintain level flight, which can be seen by watching the vertical speed indicator. Also, keep watching the angle of attack, or AOA indicator, especially as the needle begins to drift up quickly towards the 20 degree mark. You will see that's the point where I cannot pull back anymore and the plane begins to fall. This is a stall. We stalled at about 200 kilometers per hour. And as you can see, I have little roll control of the aircraft. If I try to roll any more, I risk putting the aircraft in a spin. To recover, I return the stick to neutral, or even push it a bit forward to let the plane pitch down and decrease my angle of attack. I now have control of the aircraft. I'm going to advance the throttles a bit and retract the speed brake to let my speed increase a bit before I pitch up again and return to altitude. Okay, that was fun. Now, in the SU-27, we have an angle of attack limiter built into the fly-by-wire control system. This prevents us from going past about 20 degrees of angle of attack and leaves us with some control when pulling high alpha. It also leaves the pilot with one less thing to think about while in combat, assuming he keeps his speed up. This limiter does no good if you drift below stall speed. Another disadvantage to the angle of attack limiter is that it makes for some really poor demonstrations. So I'm going to turn the ACS off. This makes for a much more sensitive and jittery aircraft and one that is much easier to stall. I am going to do a few maneuvers to demonstrate that a stall can occur at a variety of airspeeds and attitudes. First, I'm going to make a hard right hand 4G turn. Notice all the buffeting? Now look at our angle of attack indicator. See how far in the red we have gone? We have stalled the plane and our speed is still above stall speed. This is because I require four times the lift from the wing in a 4G turn. Therefore, I need airspeed just below my stall angle of attack to maintain controlled flight. When the wing is stalled, I do not have sufficient lift to make a 4G turn, and my Gs drop to just below two Gs. Okay, now I'm going to accelerate a bit and pitch up and go completely vertical. In a perfect vertical climb, the wing is generating no lift. I will then pull hard and go inverted and demonstrate a stall in that attitude. Here we go, pitched up, making sure not to stall it early. Vertical, and pulling hard, there's the stall. You can see the angle of attack needle shoot up into the red area, and the aircraft starts to shake. I can actually keep the aircraft stalled as I come all the way around the three-quarter loop. Notice we stayed above stall speed during the whole maneuver. There we go. Now I'm going to do the same as I did before, but this time I'm going to go straight down rather than up. I'm going to leave the throttles at idle so we don't accelerate too much. Okay, we are vertical, and the wings are producing no lift. We now pitch up. There we go, we're stalled. And coming around. Whoops, I really let my airspeed drop there. But as you can see, we stalled the plane way before we hit stall speed. Okay, recovering by dropping my angle of attack. So, we can stall a plane in 1G level flight, turns at 2 or more Gs, and with no lift on the wing in a vertical climb or dive. Notice I recover from every one of the maneuvers by lowering my angle of attack. This is essentially the only way to recover from a stall, besides maybe ejecting. Okay, so you've probably heard the word stall, stalled, and stalling more than you would have liked. But what about spins? Well, this is going to seem rather brief compared to my explanation of stalls. 
A spin results from lack of roll control in a stall. They are much more difficult to recover from, and types, such as the flat spin, are deemed unrecoverable in jets such as ours. A spin occurs when one wing stalls just before the other, often in a turn. The asymmetrical lift then sends the plane into, well, a spin. Usually, once in a spin, both wings are stalled, one more deeply than the other. In most planes, the only control surface available to you to recover is the rudder. All other control surfaces are either located in or are creating turbulent airflow. As I mentioned, some types of spins are unrecoverable, such as the flat spin in jets. This is because air does not flow directly into the engines, causing a compressor stall, and the engines will then quit. In a real jet fighter, a flat spin will cause the elevators to blanket the rudder as well, eliminating your only control surface that's usable in a spin. Your only option is to power out of it, which is no good if your engines have failed. At that point, you're as they say, SOL. You should begin to start thinking about ejecting. On that note, if you enter a spin below 1,000 meters or about 4,000 feet, or have not yet recovered by that point, you should eject immediately. Okay, I've turned the ACS back on so the plane's a bit easier to fly. Don't worry, we can still enter a spin with it on. One of the easiest ways to enter a spin is to use excessive control input. Today, I'm going to use every control input possible at its extreme. Full afterburner, turn, stick all the way back. Full left rudder, full left aileron. And we're spinning. Oh yeah, we're really spinning. Okay, we're in a nose down spin, which is good. I've reduced the throttle to idle and returned the stick to neutral. I'm now applying full right rudder, the direction opposite the spin. See us slowing down? Okay, we've just about stopped, still don't have much control, trying to keep the nose down a bit, once again lowering the angle of attack. Right now we're just flying a stalled aircraft. There we go, I have control again. See, I can rock the wings. See, wasn't that fun? Let's do it again. Okay, I'm gonna go to the right this time. Oops, wrong way. Here we go, full afterburner, stick full back, full right rudder, full right aileron. And we're falling. I'm no longer in control. Okay, stick neutral, throttles all the way back, full opposite rudder, slowing down. Keeping the nose down. There, I've got control again. Okay, I think that was enough for one day. Seems you're getting a little green doing that. Sorry, I left the sick bags back at base. Okay, one more thing I should note. This spin recovery technique is specific to the fighter aircraft in lock-on and does not necessarily reflect real-life procedures. Also, the dangers of a flat spin are not modeled in lock-on and can be recovered from using the same technique. You will still have some rudder control and your engines will not stall, just like in a nose-down spin. Okay, to sum things up, a stall occurs if and only if you exceed the maximum angle of attack of the wing. You recover from a stall by lowering your angle of attack back to below this angle where the relationship between angle of attack and lift is linear. A spin is an asymmetrical stall where one wing stalls first and more deeply than the other. You recover from a spin by first stopping the rotation using rudder opposite to the direction of the turn and then recover from the stall. And that concludes this tutorial. I am 104th Arrow, flight instructor in the 104th Phoenix Virtual Fighter Bomber Squadron. Please feel free to visit our website where you can participate in our forums and find information to connect to our 24-7 Lock-On and TeamSpeak 3 servers. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something. There is certainly a lot to take in, so feel free to watch it as much as you need to. And of course, please stay tuned for more of these tutorials in the near future.